guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm Dean. So we're back on the Enco lathe. Hopefully we'll wrap up this series with this uh, video. Um, we had a few delays. Uh, a lot of things came up. It's been, what, three weeks, maybe four weeks or so since our last uh, episode. Uh, yeah, some family stuff came up. I uh, had a rush project come in. Uh, ended up helping a friend with some stuff. And then uh, I got a relapse of that dumb cold virus. And yeah, so um, not a lot of time in the shop. But anyway, I did have managed to uh, get a little time here and there and work on the lathe. Um, I worked on the, uh, the back wall behind the lathe, moving some of the tooling around so things are easier to get to and more organized. Uh, I did build a little um, additional tool rack for the back wall. Uh, we got the uh, backsplash to get permanently assembled and the DRO to get mounted and then uh, uh, I've started working on the uh, cleaning up the lathe chuck, the three jaw chuck and that's kind of where things got sideways so let's, uh, let's roll those clips, take a look at it and then we'll come back to the bench and uh, we'll talk about these uh, lathe chucks and some kind of a plan to, <laughs> to move forward. Okay, so let's take a look. Just making a small shelf. I got uh, just a rough layout, uh, just with a scale, nothing, nothing critical. Um, I've got a uh, annular cutter in here, 13 16 which works out perfect for Morse Taper 3. So I'm gonna run a series of holes, kind of down to center for Morse Taper 3 tools. And then I'm going to put some smaller holes. Um, I'm not sure what size yet. Maybe for more taper two or whatever you want to drop in there. So, um, and then for alignment, <laughs> I'm just going to put in a three-quarter pointed end mill or, or mill drill just to give a, you know a rough lineup. Uh, nothing's critical here. It's just a shelf. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the rotor brooches they fit in a three-quarter collet. Um, I need to just uh, go ahead and order the proper holder for them. Um, I, these are real handy and I have quite a few, so it's time to do that. Okay, it's just a shelf. <laughs> I ended up just eyeballing the alignment. Um, it was just too much work to take the cutter in and out to, to get a precise alignment. Well, good enough for a shelf. I did uh, well, probably 90% of this just with eyechrometer layout. Um, I did have to adjust a couple of the spaces on the fly, but you know your tooling is not the same size, so having a you know a couple different spacing patterns might actually be a good thing. And it's just a shelf. <laughs> All right, let me get this off here and clean it up. Well, that was about 15 minutes to drill all those holes. And then another 45 minutes to clean up all the swarf and the mill and put the vise back on. All right, let's go put it on the wall. We got our little shelf mounted and a couple test uh, pieces in there. So, yeah, I think that'll work good. You know, just trying to use up every inch of space I can. Hey, look at that. We're making some progress. I tried to film this oh, like an hour ago, but... The neighbor's landscaper. I think they're running the leaf blower 500 uh, rally <laughs> uh, for like an hour long. Jeez. So, anyways, we've got the backsplash on. We've got the DRO mounted up. So, I'm trying to do the best I can with this cabling. This stuff is not easy to work with, it's really stiff and has a mind of its own. I'm going to try some of this wire loom covering to see if I can make things look a little better, maybe protect it a bit. We'll just have to see how that goes. This stuff was like wrestling an alligator. Actually, I think it's worse than wrestling an alligator. But anyways, check it out. We uh, got it on there. Hopefully it's the right thing to do and doesn't cause problems. And look at that. <laughs> Let's try it. So we got the Z working. And we got the X working. Well, I've got some studying to do to read up on uh, how to run this DRO. But uh, yeah, 
All right, <laughs> pull the truck off, and I've been doing some cleaning. I cleaned the spindle bore out, but this is kind of odd. So when I removed the chuck, I found a shim behind the chuck, which is kind of weird. And it's it's all one shim, same thickness, and you see I marked where where it was lined up. I had a mark on the. Uh, spindle but in the process of cleaning I ended up erasing the mark not paying attention so oh well it is what it is yeah so I don't know why anybody would do this it, I mean you know they're probably trying to get a better alignment on the uh, on the cams on the lockdown but uh, you know you can see that the previous owner has been doing quite a bit of work on here he's, he's numbered the studs and he's gone around and I think these must be run out readings that he put on every uh, stud location. So, and I did, I did um, check the run out on this chuck while it, well, while it was on there, and it was good. I mean, it was, I don't remember the numbers, but it was, I want to say it was less than two thousandths. In fact, it was around a thousandth. A thousandth. <laughs> if I can get that out. Um, yeah, so anyways, I'm going to um, spend some time when I put this back on. Um, I think I'm going to pull the cam uh, studs out, clean them. I'm going to give everything a really good cleaning. Debating whether or not to pull the seal ring off. Um, I don't want to make extra work for myself, but uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, yeah. So this was a little, uh, a little disturbing. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see what this would improve, other than giving you a little more, a little better alignment on your, uh, on your cam uh, locks. And cam lock spindle is new to me, so it's the first one I've ever dealt with. So I, I'm learning as we go here as well. Um, I know you can adjust the depth of these guys, so if there wasn't, if these weren't lining up right, you should have just adjusted here. Maybe you didn't know that, I don't know. All right. Yeah, and I'm also planning on uh, doing a disassembly on the chuck to give it a good internal cleaning and lubrication as well. I got our cam pulled out. Like I mentioned, this is the first time I've ever messed with one of these. So here's our our cam, uh, I don't know what you call it, a stud or a bolt. <laughs> so anyways, this cam goes in here, like so, and it sits in there. And what keeps it in is this little plunger. And it's got a, a flat with a point that rides in this groove. And you can see there's a little dimple right in there. So when it gets that dimple, it gives you a little um, uh, little indexing, so you know what position your cam is in. And then this is held in with a spring and a screw, like that. Okay. This spring is bent a little bit. I don't think it'll hurt anything, but uh, wish it wasn't. <laughs> and if you look at the screw, the th the last couple threads are damaged. So here's the, uh, the counter bore that that screw goes in, okay, and, th and they were, it was all the way tight, all the way down against the, uh, the, the, the head shoulder of the bolt, but the, um, this little plunger is, it, it, its OD is the tap drill size, so when they, when they, when they uh, thread that hole, they stop the little short, because they need to leave, you know, some smooth bore in there, but the the bottom couple threads are too tight. So what they should have done, and I'll probably do, is grind off the last couple threads. Um, didn't really seem to hurt it, but you know, but it's not the right way to do it. So, anyways, I thought that might be interesting to show how that works. So I'm going to pull the rest of these out, give everything a good cleaning. There's a lot of little burrs sharp edges so I need to uh, deburr all that and on on this cam as it locks in it, it you know you're rotating it this way to tighten it 
and then as it tightens up you can see where the pressure is on the back side of the cam here and and it's got a little a little bit of wear and it's raised a burr there so I've got to I've got to stone that deburr that um, yeah so I'll do all of them all right I thought that might be interesting I got the spindle all cleaned and deburred and I even added a little witness mark here just in case we ever need it for future reference and all the hardware has been cleaned, deburred. The uh, these bolts, I went ahead and put a little taper, ground a little taper on the end, and ran a tap over all of them um, because the clearance is so tight down in the bore. Only one of them was an issue, but I did them all. That way, you don't have to worry about which hole they end up in. All right, I'm going to assemble this off camera. I did put a little bit of grease in the uh, uh, locator groove. So, all right, here we go. All right, I cleaned our spindle, and I've just been checking it. Uh, the face feels good. I don't feel anything as far as burrs or nicks or anything. The uh, taper, there's one little spot in here. That's pretty good. Yeah, maybe just a couple little tiny very very small um, blemishes okay okay I did have to clean up a couple of little dingus McGee's on the spindle nose but it's tracking pretty good looks like about maybe just a hair over a tenth of a thou will run out. Okay, let me uh, set up to check the face. I moved back a little farther on the taper. About one and a half tenths. I'm going to push and pull on the spindle to see if we have any end play. About a tenth. A tenth of a thou. Okay, and let me try rotating. Let me see if we get to three zero here. Neighbors are firing up their leaf blower or some kind of machine over there. Let it kind of settle here. Hey guys, welcome back to the freezing cold garage shop. <laughs> I'm not sure where I left off on the last uh, filming episode. It's been at least a week, maybe even longer. I uh, had several interruptions. I uh, had a project come in for a customer, a little Volvo uh, transmission work, um, and was helping a friend. And, and then I got another relapse of that stupid uh, cold virus that's going around so back in the shop finally so um, I was trying to figure out what was going on with the spindle nose on the on the new lathe um, and if you remember the uh, three jaw chuck had a shim behind the chuck where, um, uh, where it mounts so this four jaw chuck also came with the lathe I don't think it's really ever been used I mean it's like brand new um, and it, you know, it looks like it's, you know, maybe been cleaned once and, uh, put back in the box. Uh, but I'm going to disassemble it and clean it and, you know, do any deburring that needs to be done. And then, uh, then I'm going to try fitting this on the lathe spindle and, uh, see how it fits up, you know, because something's weird. This is the same brand. It's a, uh, Hue Pie. Uh, Chinese chuck uh, but yeah something's weird and 
you shouldn't have to put a shim behind the uh, the, the spindle uh, mount. So hopefully this one is correct and fits up correctly. I've also got a faceplate, so uh, I got a, a third choice if we need to try it. Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, uh, let me get this cleaned up. I may just show a couple of clips of that, and then we'll try our fitting on the lathe. Got them all number stamped. Probably can't see them too well in the camera. But uh, what's interesting is number three here. This one was a lot harder than the other jaws. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know. Okay, this isn't looking too good guys, so off camera I did a test fit and this is the four jaw, the eight inch or 200 millimeter chuck. Um, it's rocking on the spindle nose, that should not happen. So as you can see I've got it blued up and I'm going to uh, see how it marks up uh, with the bluing on there. This is a test fit of the faceplate. Now I'm assuming the faceplate was supplied by ENCO. It's the same color as the lathe and the same color as the other accessories. So ENCO to ENCO, okay? So as you can see, I blew up the, uh, the, the taper bore and, and I did a test fit. And this looks pretty good. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's kind of glary here. But uh, we've got pretty good looking contact all the way around. And, and it felt really good. I didn't get a uh, feeler gauge in here to see what the spacing was for the face. But I'll do that here in a bit. So uh, based on this, um, I, I'm going to say that the spindle is fine. Taper's fine. Um, using the faceplate as our reference. Now the, I'm going to go back and, and check those chucks again. I'm going to repeat the uh, bluing process, but I think both of those chucks are junk at this point. Alrighty, so um, trying to figure out what was going on with the spindle nose and the chuck and so forth. Uh, I didn't film a lot of it because it was just getting you know too difficult to film and and try to analyze what was happening at the same time. So we're going to summarize uh, what I've done and found here. So this is the three jaw chuck that was on the machine when we got it and it's the one that had this 2000 shim behind the chuck. Okay. Uh, the grandsons are playing hockey in the front yard so all right hold on all right I gotta cut this short but <laughs> I promised the grandson I'd go out and play hockey with him in, uh, in a few minutes so um, so this is the shim that was um, that behind this chuck 2000th thickness okay so after all the measuring and marking and everything I've come to the conclusion that that the tapered bore in the back of this chuck is not bored deep, deep enough. It's concentric on center, it just is not deep enough. Um, when I went to take this chuck off, it was stuck on there pretty good. So um, I don't want to go back this way. So what I've, and by the way, I've ordered a new chuck. <laughs> I ordered a brand new eight inch uh, three jaw chuck. Um, but that's probably not going to be here for, you know, probably another four or five days. So what I'm thinking, the taper marks up fine. So the, the angle is correct. It's, it's concentric. But it's just not deep enough. And I don't want to try to regrind this. Um, and it's, it's just a Chinese chuck. So I don't think it's worth putting a lot of effort into it. Um, although I did do a full disassembly and cleaning and 
it's actually not bad. <laughs> it's actually pretty nice. Uh, everything fits good, it, uh, machine nice and so forth. So it's really not that bad of a chuck, uh, you know, other, other than this not being ground right. So I think what I'm going to try, and I might be totally out to lunch on this, and you guys chime in, <laughs> let me know what you think. But I made a new shim, uh, six thousandths thick, okay? And I'm thinking just by putting that on there, um, that will get our engagements correctly um, with the depth of the taper and the, and the face. So I'm going to try it. I, I don't think it's going to hurt anything to try it, but uh, that's my plan for you know the, the immediate um, week or so is to put this back on with this shim. Okay, now let's move over to the four jaw. So the four jaw, it's the same brand of uh, chuck. It's the 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 hue pie, however you pronounce it. <laughs> so what I found on this one after multiple reblooings and test fitting is that this taper, the angle is right, but it's egg shaped. It's not round. Um, how well this is going to show up. Let me zoom you guys in. So it's got halfway decent contact. And it's, by the way, it's really hard to hold this heavy chuck up there and, and keep everything perfectly aligned while you're trying to do these, this, this marking work. But anyways, as you come around, this side right here makes no contact at all. You can see I've written, I wrote that on there and then I re-blued this multiple times and it's always the same spot. Even when you rotate the spindle, it doesn't matter. It's always here. So I know the problem is in the chuck. And it's just, it's, it's egg shaped. Um, so I don't know how that happens at the factory. Maybe they had, you know, some swarf under the mandrel that they use. Maybe the machine had run out. Yeah, I don't know. But, um, and I know on a four jaw chuck, if it's slightly off of uh, concentricity, you just dial it in with the jaws, okay? But I don't think this is actually round. I think it's actually egg shaped. And I don't want to take the chance of screwing up the spindle on the lathe. I mean, this is probably a, you know, $150 chuck and it's not worth it uh, to uh, take the chance of screwing that spindle up. At least in my opinion, you guys tell me what you think. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I might actually explore regrinding it. And I know these are super difficult to do. Um, Mr. Crispin, if you guys watch his channel, he did, um, uh, I think a three video series on regrinding a uh, camlock uh, spindle taper and face and he put a lot of thought into it and uh, quite a quite a setup to do it uh, definitely something to to check out if you're interested yeah so i don't want to put this on the machine the way it is so my original thought was oh i'll just use the forge off well <laughs> that ain't happening okay the faceplate, as I mentioned, the faceplate um, is good, at least to the best that I can tell. There's no issue with the faceplate. Um, so it it's confirming to me that the spindle is fine and the problem is over here in these chucks. I was just confirming that dead center of our witness mark on our studs is where we want to be. I just... Uh, I went over and put one in the spindle and just uh, tested where the engagement starts and uh, yeah dead center is uh, looks like the best option I looked at you know if you go another full turn it probably would work but it, it was looking like it was going to be a little too tight so we're going to just do it the way you're supposed to do it right there off camera I went ahead and did our fit up on the uh, chuck and I just took my time, so my first test, I just I just gently went around all the all three uh, cam locks, just getting them you know to make contact, 
and then I went around oh, probably three or four times just bringing it in a little bit more each time and then uh, just moderate pressure the first time and then what I did I loosened everything up and I wanted to see how tight the chuck was getting in the taper and all I had to do was just I mean just a just a baby tap with the rubber rubber end of the uh, soft hammer here and she came right loose so then I did it again and fully torqued everything evenly undid everything and same situation just a light tap with the rubber hammer and she came loose so I think our based on that unscientific test I, I think that shim is, is perfect um, when I took this off originally with the 2000 shim in there I had a heck of a time getting the chuck out um, I actually had to use the cam locks to put a little reverse pressure plus you know quite a bit of tapping with a bigger rubber mallet and some time and before I could finally get the chuck to release so I think we're good let's uh, do a run out test let me show you what we got here so we got a um, a drill blank 9 16 drill blank so that looks like about maybe 13 tenths okay let's move out a little bit So it's a little better farther out and I tried a different drill blank just to make sure that this one didn't have something uh, strange going on um, and they both uh, uh, read about the same. So that, trying to analyze this, I think that means our, our face alignment is probably a little off. Um, it's weird that it's better out here than here, but this might be the crossover point is somewhere out here in space. Okay, but uh, heck, for a cheap three-jaw chuck, Chinese chuck, I think we can live with that. Okay, let's see what we have on the body. About the same as we were getting on the piece of drill rod. Okay, I think I can live with that. I don't know if I can get a reading on this face or not. Let me see if I can set that up. All right, I'm measuring off the ground faces on our chuck jaws. Okay, so we're zeroed out. We're, uh, we're in one revolution of the uh, dial indicator here. I'm trying to work around the camera. Okay, so I'm coming around. So what do we got? Five, negative five tenths, or yeah, five tenths. That one. Negative five tenths. Back around to this guy. Back to zero. Oh, okay, so there's a little, little discrepancy on that jaw right there. It's probably tilted a little bit. How about this one? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, okay, but you know, overall, for a cheap Chinese chuck and our our redneck janky uh, shim setup that we got in there. That's pretty dang good. <laughs> oh, and I do have a, uh, a dowel clamp, clamped in the uh, chuck there. All right, well, I think um, we can run with this one um, until we get our other one. Actually, this is probably as good as you're going to get with a three jaw in most cases. So, y'all ready for this?
first run. Hey, enough screwing around already. Let's make some chips. Found a piece of mystery metal. Let me get it set up. All right, you guys are right where I need to be, but let's see if we can do this. I got our RPM set for 300. This is a inch and a 3 16th bar. The tool I have in there is not really a correct facing tool. Um, and I looked around. I don't want to rotate my tool post because I just spent some time getting it squared up. So let's just try it and see what happens. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get a center in there. Left a little bit of a pip on there. All right, off camera, I got the uh, center height adjusted on that uh, kind of makeshift facing tool. All right, let's put a center in this thing. of this shaft is kind of mushroom so I don't want to get right on the end. It's sticking out kind of far but I think we're going to be okay. Okay I'm just going to touch off and do a, just a manual test cut first and then, uh, then we'll kick in the power feed. All right, here we go. Let me engage the feed here. We're about five thousandths per revolution. Okay. That's looking pretty good. I don't like that chip. Oops, that wasn't what I wanted to do. <laughs> All right, rookie mistake number one. I thought I was uh, disengaging the power feed, <laughs> and I hit the uh, the stop lever. Okay, so I've increased our feed rate. Those stringy chips are terrible. So let's try it again. I, we went from five thousandths. Now we're at a seven thousandths feed, and let's see if we can get those chips to break. And those chips are really shiny, so this may be something a little better than just mild steel. All right, here we go. All right. Nope. Let's take a deeper cut. Let's go 40. Okay, first part's going to be just ten thousandths. Alright, here we go. So now we're doing 40. Well, not too bad. All right, well, she cuts. I'm going to flip this around and we'll clean up the other end. 
All right, those are some nasty chips. So I've made a couple changes. I've increased our speed to 500 RPM since we're using carbide. Uh, I think it'll be okay for facing the end off with the high speed steel. It's just a small uh, cut. We'll put some oil on there. All right, let's see if we can do better this time. I think that's just a little ring. Yeah, that's all it is. That's pretty tough metal. I don't think it's uh, mild steel. there um, grabbing the wrong handle running the wrong speed but uh, I mean overall it, it, uh, it did a good job the machine seems to run good um, we got a, another piece of material to throw on the uh, material rack uh, I did hit this with a little bit of uh, emery afterwards but uh, yeah cleaned up nice yeah so um, I'm certainly not done uh, getting this thing set up I've got to uh, do the final leveling We've got to, you know, uh, make a test bar, you know, make sure we're not turning a taper, that kind of stuff. Um, and then just, I need, I just need to spend some time with it, learning, uh, learning where all the handles and controls are. It's come a lot different than the old South Bend. So just got to get familiar with it and comfortable with it. But uh, anyways, I think we're going to wrap up this series. Um, we'll probably have some more videos of, you know, doing other work uh, on, on the lathe, but essentially it's ready to go. We've got the new chuck coming. That should be here in a, hopefully a few days. Uh, we've got that to put on. And uh, until then, we will see you guys on the next one. Thanks a lot, everybody. Quite the fiddly process getting this shim fine-tuned. I've had to um, go around with the grinder. You know, I mark it and then I go with the uh, with the Dremel.
put a grinding stone in it and fine tune the fit. And then you've got to deburr everything. And then I have to fi my final step is uh, some 1500 uh, wet and dry paper just to give it a good polish. So I think I got it now. I'm going to go ahead and try fitting it on the lathe and see what happens. Let me show you guys how these controls work. It took me a minute to figure it out. So no power right now. And uh, our reset uh, kill switch is in the stop position. Power on. Okay, we've got a power light. And you can't do anything until you reset the uh, e-stop. Alright, so we got that reset. Next step is... Um, you gotta energize the system. Power start. So now she's ready to run. They got a jogging button here they call inching. But normally you're gonna start it over here on the uh, on the carriage. Forward. Let's try some different speeds. Can you guys see okay? Yeah. Alright, let's put it into a different gear here. And I'm still trying to learn <laughs> all the different speeds. It's, uh, it's not real straightforward. Luckily they give you a chart. Okay, let's see what this is. Okay, I think that's our slowest. I think this is 180. Alright. By that. And okay, this should be five twenty five. Okay, this is probably going to sling some oil. I'm still getting oil out of that chuck. And I do have a piece of material clamped in there. Okay, that falls out right there. Let's try it in reverse. 